Welcome back to the channel. Today I'm here at the guest accommodation and for charging I have only the standard household socket available. So the question is, is it really safe to charge your EV from a standard household socket or SUCO as we call it here in Europe? Because that's how many EV owners start with charging when they first get their first EV. They have only the regular wall socket available. You might still be waiting for your wallbox installation or maybe you are at the workplace where there is only Shuko or at Airbnb or other guest accommodation where usually all there is is the Shuko standard household socket. So in this video we'll dive deeper into that topic of safety with charging from standard socket and what are the things that you need to take into account when you have to do that and when you don't have any other charging options available. So, let's do it! The electric seal. So this is how it quite often starts. There is the regular wall socket, not in perfect condition, that is the, usually the case. And then you have some just a cheap regular charger. And of course, you want to charge your car. It's simple and it works, but is it really safe? In this video we'll discuss what actually happens when you plug into one of these and what are the things you, do, you need to take into account to optimize the safety and are there risks in doing this. So you need to take things into account before you plug in your EV. So that's the topic that we'll discuss today. And the thing is, the standard household socket was never really designed for this use. It was meant for short, light duty use, maybe some electric tools, but not heavier than that. But of course an electric car draws a lot of power continuously for hours and that's a huge load compared to uh, what this socket was designed to, to, to be used. So sometimes 10 amps for let's say 10 hours straight. That is pretty normal use case when you charge over the night. For example here I'm staying at the guest accommodation and I have agreed with the owner to charge uh, during the night. And now, of course, I don't want to exaggerate any risks. I mean, overall, if you just limit the amps low enough, that's already pretty safe, generally. And the risk is very low. But at the same time, there are things that you can do to make it safer and to have that peace of mind. And every EV owner should consider these things. So with older sockets and older wiring that have maybe loosened up over time, that kind of continuous load, especially if it's 16 amps or somewhere close, that can cause heat buildup, voltage drops, and in the worst case, even melted plugs. That has happened to people. This is why in some cases you might notice the socket or the cable feel really warm or even hot during the charging. And that's not normal. That is the first warning sign and then you should definitely stop charging if you notice anything like this. So the least that you can do is to do the touch test. Is it warm after, let's say, half an hour of charging? If it feels really warm or even hot, then it's better to stop right away. So continuous load equals heat and that equals risk. So what are the things that you can do to optimize the safety if you have to use the Shuko socket? So maybe you are still waiting for your wallbox installation or you are charging at workplace or at an Airbnb. What are those things that you can reduce the risk to minimal level? And the first thing that you really should do is to investigate the socket. And here, for example, it looks quite old and not optimal for this kind of use. So always check with the, for example, if you're staying at guest accommodation before you plug in anything, always check from the owner that it is okay to charge. And here I know that this socket can be used. It has been checked that it's okay to charge with certain power. But I wouldn't use just any charger here and just plug it and leave it. Because it's very much recommended to use a Shuko charger that has at least control setting over the amps. Uh, how many amps you are drawing from the socket. And then the Shuko charger should have a necessary protection for over voltage, under voltage, leakage protection and those kind of things. Even though the Shuko and the standard household socket is never optimal for charging an EV. But those are among the things that you can ensure to really minimize that risk to much lower level. 
And of course, there are plenty of these kind of chargers that meet these requirements. But I want to show you one of those kind of products, and that is the D Type 2 Shuko charger that is built exactly for cases like this. That you have only the standard outlet available, but you want proper safety monitoring. And that is built into this device. So let's take a closer look at this one. So here in this compact case, there is the user guide, of course, uh, microfiber cloth. There's also a wall mount, so you can you can actually mount this on the wall as well. I won't be doing that here. A uh, cable holder. And then, of course, the charging cable and the charger unit. And those safety measures that I was talking about, uh, controlling the amps, detecting over voltage, under voltage, leakages, those safety features are built into this unit. So this has more safety features built into it to reduce the risk of charging from the regular household socket. But now let's plug in this Shuko plug and the Type 2 connector and see how does this charger work in practice. And when you have plugged in the Shuko plug but haven't yet connected the charger to the car, the first thing that you should do is to set the amps to the right level. So this A is a touch button that you can control the amps. So minimum is 6 amps, then there is 8, 10, 13 and 16 is the maximum. And with 16 amps in one phase from the standard socket, that will get you 3.7 kilowatts. That is the maximum charging power that this charger can deliver. But here I have agreed with the owner to charge at 10 amps because this socket doesn't have a dedicated fuse. It has a shared fuse with other household appliances. And 10 amps is the level that I have agreed that it, it is uh, possible to charge at that power. So I will set the amps to 10 before connecting the charger to the car. So that's important to remember. Always ensure the right level of amps before you plug in your EV and start charging. All right, so immediately after connecting the Type 2 connector to the car, the charger started charging at 10 amps, which means 2 kilowatts from this one-phase Shuko socket. As always with the D's chargers, there's a lot of information on this LCD screen, so you can see the amp levels, the voltages, charged amount, the charging power, of course, charging duration, and then you have here at the bottom uh, the icons to indicate that the vehicle connection is okay and the, the grounding status is also okay. And talking about the built-in protections that this device has, it has inside full protection. There is the overheat, overcurrent, undervoltage, grounding fault and short circuit detection. So if anything goes out of spec, so to say, for example, some moisture gets in and causes a small fault or the plug gets too warm, then this charger instantly stops charging. And this is uh, something that not all chargers do. They don't necessarily have this uh, safety measures built in. And it's one of those things that kind of uh, increase my peace of mind when charging here at guest accommodation from the standard household socket. And one of the things I like about this DS Type 2 Shuko charger is the LCD screen. You can see the real-time voltage, for example. So you don't have to rely just on the touch test, you know, is it, is it warm, is it getting warm? Of course, it's always good practice to do that anyway, but having this information on the LCD screen, I think is really valuable for checking that the device works correctly and there are no unexpected changes in the voltages and nothing weird is going on. So that's definitely one highlight of this charger, controlling the amps, having the built-in safety measures and the protection features, and then the LCD screen. Those are the things that I would highlight. And the manufacturer says that this charger works 
and operates between minus 25 degrees and plus 50 degrees. And that's a good thing because here where I am in Finland, most part of the country, we experience a few days in a year where the temps drop below minus 20 degrees Celsius. So this minus 25 definitely is not too much at all for Finnish conditions. I actually would hope that it would be a little bit better spec, maybe minus 30, especially if you are located in northern uh, part of the country, in Lapland. Um, but I think I will manage with this 25 operating temperature limit. And regarding the waterproofness and the build quality, this device unit is rated IP66, so that's dust proof and waterproof. So even if you're charging outside, like I'm here, uh, in light rain, in medium rain, this, this product is suitable for that kind of weather. Uh, the cable itself here is a thick one. It is of course CE certified and built for continuous load. So it's definitely not like anything like using some thin extension cords like some people use with the Shuko charging. This is a proper equipment for this use case. And IP66 is uh, fully dust tight and safe even against strong rain or water spray. Uh, the manufacturer recommends that if there is a really heavy rain, then it's not recommended to charge during uh, really intense rain and definitely not you know under thunderstorm or anything like that so common sense is good to keep in mind but in terms of the ip rating and the build quality this device is definitely designed for outdoor use and finally about the portability of course like i showed this case is a really compact one this is easy to carry with you the charging uh, cable that i have here is uh, 5 meter cable, but D is offering very flexible length options. So you can choose between uh, 5 meter all the way up to even 25 meter cable if you need to. Uh, that of course takes then a lot more space and it will weigh a lot more if you have a 25 meter cable length. And of course that's not optimal for uh, in terms of the charging losses either, because the shorter cable the better in terms of the charging efficiency. But in case you would need a longer cable, there's plenty of options to choose from. So if you own an EV, you probably will be charging from household socket at some point. Maybe before you'll get your wallbox installed or while traveling. But the key of course is to do it safely. A cheap unmonitored cable that you can find from anywhere might work and it probably does work. But this one here gives you proper control and data. And it's built to the same standards as a regular wall box. So in the beginning of this video the question was, is it safe to charge from a regular household socket? And to be honest, it's never optimal charging solution. But with simple wise decisions you can still optimize the safety. If you use the right equipment and understand the limits. And definitely one good option is the D Type 2 Shuko charger. It lets you do this charging as safely and smartly as possible. Whether you are at home or on the go. So I'll leave a link below in the description if you want to check the specs and price of this product. And as always, thank you for watching and see you in the next one.